Coach Dolby. Tell them we got it, Roy. All right, boys, now they're on the way. Now don't anybody get over anxious. These Renos ain't ordinary robbers. They got instincts like animals. Now the least wrong move and we can lose them. So wait till they come out of the bank with the money. Understand? Out of the bank. All right, now you deputies take your positions. The rest of you people take your place as long the street like we planned. <laughs> The big one's five. Renos are coming. Too bad Mr. Peterson has to miss this. I don't think we get the Renos to wait. They ready in the bank? They got everything set. Good. Clear the street. The Renos are coming. The Renos. Remember today you're a couple of farmers. You all set? Down out of sight and stay down. Out of the bank. This time we're gonna nail him with the goods. There ought to be more people around. It's got to be natural. Nobody knowed we was coming with us. Making it easier to get away. Frank's right. I don't like it neither. You getting jumpy in your old age, John? Quiet. What do you say, Frank? Keep going. Too much time to pass it up. Well, right now Frank might as well go through with it, huh? What do you say, Frank? We'll take it. Thank <laughs> you. 
He can't leave Bill. How bad is he hit? He's dead. Come on, Sid. Couldn't arrest him over there, even if we caught him. Jackson County. The Reno's run it from top to bottom. Well, we got one of them anyway. Yeah. Let's head back. Is that going to help? Is that going to bring Bill back to life? Take it easy, sis. How? Not knowing when you go out that door if you're ever coming back. This time it was Bill. And the next time, somebody else. That's the way it is, Laura. It doesn't have to be. You could leave the state. You could go somewhere where nobody ever heard of the Renos. Where would that be? Anywhere. It was my fault, honey. I, I smelled it. I smelled it! Ain't no use carrying on about it now. The important thing is, how did they know we was coming? Yeah, how did they know? And so far ahead. Maybe somebody recognized you last week when you were sizing up the job. Maybe. But how did they know when we was coming? Dear brother? Yes. So it finally happened. Areno got killed. Clint, we want no preaching. Take it easy, sir. The 
baby of the family dying in the streets and his big brave brothers running away. Not even animals would do a thing like that. Dead in the street, not dying. As if that made any difference. That's enough of that kind of talk, Clint. We sent for you, Clint, uh, because we want you to go to North Vernon and, and get Bill's body. They'll let you have it. You mean they won't arrest me? The Reno that's honest, that's quite a distinction in this community, an honest Reno. We rode into an ambush. Somebody told them we was coming. That shouldn't surprise you. The Renos are worth a lot of money. Dead. You knowed we was gone. You accused me of being a spy! I'll kill you! Wouldn't put it past you, you mealy mouthed psalm singer. He was right fond of Bill Clint. So was I. I tried hard enough to keep him from pitching in with you. And you, as long as you live, don't you ever accuse me of being an informer again. You got plans? Keep them to yourself. I don't want to know about them, not even accidentally. You won't. You're notorious outlaws. The law will get you sooner or later, and they'll get you any way they can. In the bank, ambush, while you're sleeping, they'll get you. Bill's death was only the beginning. Can't you see that, Lori? Can't you see it? I'm not doing anything. You're harboring him. What do you expect me to do? Pa would never have left you the house if he'd known how you were going to use it. I can't turn my own brothers out. How far does loyalty go? They're not only destroying themselves, they're destroying you too. Leave her alone, Clint. Peterson won't leave her alone. He won't leave any of you alone. We can handle anything that Peterson throws our way. Like you did today. All right. I'll go to North Vernon and get Bill. We'll bury him beside Ma and Pa. Perhaps their souls will be a little less troubled now. Three of a kind. Such a gall, such unmitigated gall. It'd never be elected if the women folk could vote. Yes, and we'll get the vote one day. Nobody to blame but ourselves. We voted him in. Well, why don't we do something about it? Have you forgotten? Edelbach tried. Look what happened to him. We'd best let Peterson take care of the Reno brothers. waiting for us. Loaded up and waiting. Somebody told him we was coming. Maybe Peterson's got a man planted in town. Who knowed you was going to North Vernon? You three. Now, hold on, Frank. He's not Please. accusing us, Judge. He knows we wouldn't kill the golden geese. Did Clint know you was going? It wasn't Clint. He ain't one of us, but he wouldn't have no part of setting up an ambush. Maybe it was Sim. He's kind of talky when he's drinking. Yeah, and he does most of his drinking at Murphy's place. Yeah, and his bragging. And Murphy's the only new man to come to town in years. You suppose Murphy's a Peterson man? Do a little drink, eh? Yeah, go on a little lot more. Shot him in the back. They shot him in the back. 
Yeah, I heard about Bill. What happened over in North Vernon? I made a mistake. I shot too fast, woke up the town, and they got Bill, shot him in the back. All my fault. Clumsy. All my fault. Well, I don't think Bill would have felt that way. He always thought you were the best. I was the best till, till I made that mistake. Bill down. Now he's dead. He's dead. Yeah, we all have to go sooner or later. But they're gonna go sooner. Come Saturday, we're going back to North Vernon and blast the devil out of them. We'll get even for Bill. And this time, we'll get the money. We'll get the money this time. I saw him write a note first. Then he went out the barn, saddled the horse, and left. Where'd he go? Up the Glendale Road. Couldn't follow without him knowing it. How long ago was that? 30, 40 minutes. But where does he mail this note? They don't. He hides it someplace for another Peterson man to pick up. A stinking spy. We'll find out about that soon enough. You reckon he'll be home by now? We'll wait. We've got time. Tell Dobie to get the horse. Stinking spy. Spy? What are you talking about, Sims? You're a Peterson man. Peterson man? You're crazy. Don't lie to us, Murphy. You know me, boys. You've known me for a long time. Yeah. I mean, now you tipped off Peterson that we was going to raid the bank in North Vernon. Why would I do that? Because you're getting paid for it. You just delivered a letter saying we were going to head North Vernon again. Didn't you, Murphy? I don't know where you got such an idea. We baited you, Murphy. Simmy just played like he was getting drunk and giving away secrets. We know that it flush you out. And Courtright saw you write the letter. Courtright's lying. Get a rope. You kill me, Frank. Somebody else will come. We'll handle him, too. I'm up to the staller. John, get that horse out of there. Maybe we ought to let him come too, so he'll know what's happening. Huh? Ain't got time. There's another letter for Peterson.
Monk Claxton's here, Dad. Oh, good. Have him come in. Come on in, Monk. Thank you, Bill. Hello, Mr. Peterson. Glad to see you, Monk. Sit down. Thank you, sir. How are things in Denver? Couldn't be better, Bill. Did you read about Murphy? Yes, sir, I did. And that's what happens when something goes wrong. They're shrewd, those Renos, and vicious. Control a whole county in southern Indiana. Judge, prosecutor, constable, all on their side. Reno's had him elected. Hmm. I still wonder how a thing like that could happen. Well, people who've had freedom as long as we have sometimes take it for granted. Come election day, they're lazy or callous. Same thing. However, it's done. Our job is to get it under. Yes, sir. How do we go about it? You're a married man, Monk. Yes, sir. My wife knows the line of work I'm in. I don't want you to jump into this thing. I didn't know exactly what you had in mind, but to bring me all the way from Denver, the way I figure it, this is sort of a promotion. Well, don't let your vanity get in the way of your better judgment, Monk. I'm a working man, Bill, with a job to do. If I didn't like my work, I'd have gotten out of it long ago. In the war, we called it calculated risk. Yeah, we did. I've got a new man I want you to work with, Monk. I don't figure this is a time to break in a greenhorn. All new to us, that is. He's had some experience along this line. Maybe not experience with this kind of violence, but I think he's the kind of a man that can handle himself in rough going. Name is James Barlow. Barlow? Well, I see you remember him. It's the same James Barlow I'm thinking of. I do remember him. He is. He was in the employ of the Southern States. Which we found out after the war. Mr. Greeley said that he was worth a whole army. <laughs> it's the only thing that Mr. Greeley ever said that Mr. Lincoln agreed with. <laughs> I still wonder how he got hold of so many secrets. Certain generals' wives found him very charming. Irresistible is the word, Dad. As a matter of fact, I recall... Oh, I wasn't the only one that invited him to dinner. Secretary Stanton had him, too. <laughs> Immodest as it may sound, man could fool Stanton and me, could fool the Reno boys. Sounds mighty reasonable, sir. You ought to trust him implicitly. Let him run the whole show. How does he plan to get in with the Reno brothers? He doesn't. He plans to let them get in with him. your report to the sheriff on this robbery, my description is as follows. Six feet three, 195 pounds, hazel eyes and brown hair. Six three, 195 pounds, hazel eyes and brown hair.
Ain't that old man you, Holtz Rig? Yes, he's my uncle. I'd like a side of salt meat, 10 pounds of sugar, five pounds of coffee, some bacon soda, and a bathtub. All right, mister. Good morning. Good morning. I take it you're Jim Barlow, no, you all's nephew. That's right. Said a couple of days ago he was expecting you, staying at the farm. Mm-hmm. Here, you're a painter. Yes, I am. What do you paint? Oh, uh, things, uh, people, like El Greco, Rembrandt, Van Dyke. Uh, not quite. Oh, uh, this is Mr. Claxton. How do you do? Nice to meet you. You a painter, too? No, I'm just looking after Mr. Barlow. He's not fully recovered from the war. Oh. Morning, Miss Laura. Good morning, Mr. Fisher. Uh, is my order ready? Yes, just finished it. Oh, uh, Miss Reno, this is Mr. Barlow. How do you do, Mr. Barlow? It's a pleasure, Miss Reno. Noah Uhalt's nephew. He's a painter. Oh. Will that be all, sir? Excuse me, please. Mm-hmm. Uh, three dollars and uh, 20 cents. Mr. Fisher, can you change this? Mr. Barlow, have you got anything smaller? Sorry, I haven't. Hmm. Take all my change. Here you are, sir. Thank you very much. And come again. I'll do that. I'll be around for some time. There you are, Miss Laura. May I help? Oh, don't bother. Quite the contrary. Well, thank you. seen him before. Thank you very much. I hope to see you again, Miss Laura. May I call on you sometime? Boy, I'm afraid not, Mr. Barlow. Who are you, mister? That's none of your business, Pete. You better be on your way, you. Oh, I beg your pardon? You heard him. On your way. My friends, you have not very good manners. Oh. Mark, take his gun down. Sorry, Miss Laura. Still up to your old tricks, huh? $30,000, Frank. That's a heap of money. Are you out of your mind? I told you, we didn't do this train robbery. The robber wore a mask, had hazel eyes and sandy hair, was around 35 years old, 6 feet 3 inches, weight 195 pounds. The description fits you, John. Careful, Lattimore. It's a lot of other people, too. $30,000. The judge would be mighty pleased to share a heap of money like that. We didn't do it. But I wish we had. Don't argue with him, sir. You're in no position to get uppity. Listen, you've got your full portion of every job we've ever pulled, and you'll go right on getting it. So don't come around here accusing us of holding out on you. All right, Frank. But as prosecuting attorney of this county, I warn you... Sure was rough on him. It would be rougher not to accuse us anymore. 
Sit around doing nothing while we take all the chances. Well, aces in the hole, you gotta pay for aces in the hole. $30,000 is a heap of money. Now, who'd have thought of holding up a train? Seems like a business worth considering. <laughs> What's the matter with them? Oh, money crazy as usual. They're accusing John of holding up the train. Yeah, but Frank shut him up real proper. You think it's smart to make them mad? They better worry about making me mad. You set it up well. Good. Buy some extra shooting iron? No, he met a young lady. Two gentlemen objected. Turned out to be a couple of fellas named Lee and Pete. Oh, they're a couple of the Reno gang. The families? No, just henchmen. So, well, you certainly started the ball rolling, all right. <laughs> you sure did. That's the object. But the description does fit John Reno. John Reno didn't do it. He never does anything by himself. Frank does all the thinking. Frank didn't do it either. Mine don't run that way. You're too suspicious. You got a right to be suspicious. Our share keeps getting smaller and smaller. First thing you know, they'll deal us out completely. <laughs> How can they? We'll be reelected next month for two more years. They know which side their bread's buttered on. <laughs> you think we can get away with this for two more years? Our collusion with the Reno brothers is one of the worst kept secrets in history. Collusion, conspiracy, malfeasance. Ugly words, Your Honor, but true. We've got to be realistic. A bank job at North Vernon sure would have helped. No need crying about that. We'll make it up on that Davies County job. How much will tax collections run? Might amount to 20,000. This time we'll protect ourselves. We'll send Jason a court right with him. Oh, they ain't had no experience in that kind of thing. Experience doesn't matter. When the money's counted, I want somebody there we can trust. Think you'll ever find anybody you can trust? For you, Judge. No, from Palmer on the bank. Just come across one of them hundred dollar bills for the train robbery. Serial numbers check. Where'd you get it? It's Wade Fisher's apartment. You reckon when the Reno spent it? We're sure gonna find out who spent it. Sure, I remember. First hundred dollar bill I've seen in years. No, you all's nephew spent it. The one that tangled with Pete McCartney and Lee Harney? That's right. Name's Barlow. He's a painter. New fella. You have to be new to tangle with those two. Had a whole handful of hundred dollar bills. Something wrong? No, no, no. Uh, just check it. Did you hear that? A whole handful of hundred dollar bills? Something else, too. He fits the description of the holdup man. I'd say he has some explaining to do. You fellas better get at it. I'm getting sick and tired of you snarling at me. Well, then behave yourself. You know how I feel about you taking up with strangers. I didn't take up with him. He helped me into the buggy with my packages. Well, the boys said you and him was getting mighty friendly. Now you understand one thing. This is my house. You want to go on using it, you better be careful. Back to the Davies County job. This time we're not all going in at once. Go in in three locks. What is it? Somebody I've never seen before. you to bring these back. Guess those two have cooled off enough to be trusted with them. Besides, it gives me a chance to see you again. Hold it. Get inside. Don't order me around, Frank. 
What do you want? Oh, why, nothing. I'm just returning some equipment that belongs to friends of Miss Lara's, some pistols. Drop them. Now back away. Who's he? I'm her brother. Well, mister, I must say, you don't act very neighborly. Got no cause to be neighborly. Get off of the property and stay off. Didn't come to see you, came to see Miss Laura. You heard me. Stop it, Frank. Stop it! It's all right, Miss Laura. Needn't be trouble. I'll see you someplace else. When you coming in town again? She ate. In the morning. See you then. You may think you're spiting me, but let me tell you something. Anything goes wrong, you've got just as much to lose as the rest of us. Get that through your pretty little head, will you? Get one thing through your head, too. I'm not a child. And I won't be treated like one any longer. I hear mice. Put your hands up. What's going on here? Yes, you two. Who are you? The law. Anybody else inside that house, come out with your hands up. Well, I'll sue this county for every dime it's got. Maybe not. Mind telling us what the charge is? Suspicion. Or worse. Suspicion of what? Train robbery. Train robbery? Why, you're a bigger fool than I thought. All right, boys, take him into town. Well, you can't do this, I tell you. Most disgraceful thing I ever heard of. Who do you fellas think you are, anyway? The law, that's who. Take him in. Six nice, clean, crisp, hundred-dollar notes. Shall we uh, just forget the judge and split this between us? Why? Why, uh, why not? Let's have a look inside. We were coming to Seymour from Robinson, Illinois. We saw the crowd around the money box. We went down there. There had been a train robbery. We found the money. I guess the robbers dropped it. For three hours, I've been telling you that. If for three hours, I've been telling you we don't believe it. I can't help it. Sit down. I have a drink of water. No. The money matches. The description matches. Your arrival here matches. Everything matches. Coincidence. Where's the money? You took it. I mean the rest of it. The other $29,000. Oh, what's the use? You won't believe me. Any news? I won't talk. How about him? Nothing. All right, on your feet. Come on. Where's the money? Latimer was asking him questions. All of a sudden, Barlow said, get the judge. And Latimer got excited. He kept saying he was the prosecutor's attorney. And if Barlow had anything to say, he was the one to say it to. Naturally, I'm the one to talk to. Latimer tries to hog everything.
He wants to talk to you. So we're here. Go ahead and talk. Hello. You listen to me. I'm the prosecuting attorney here. Wait outside. This was my doing. He never budged till I threatened to get the express messenger down here to identify him. That's what weakened him. Wait outside. Can I have a drink of water, Judge? Go ahead. Do you appreciate irony, Judge? How's that? The imponderables. The little things that happen to wreck a foolproof setup that you can never figure will happen. This was a foolproof setup. I had a contact man in the express office who told me when the money would be shipped. I picked the perfect spot for the train robbery. The money box was open just right. And up to that point, everything was perfect. And then, and then came the imponderable. In my hurry to get away, I dropped a few bills with serial numbers. And here I am, irony. Where's the money? Hidden. My share, that is. Your share? You're in this all by yourself. No man could do this by himself. There were six of us, seven counting the contact man. Where are they now? Scattered. That leaves three here. Two, but Claxton and me. u haul had nothing to do with it. He didn't know about it. Claxton's share hidden, too? With mine at the u haul farm. Where at the u haul farm? You couldn't find it. I'd have to go with you. Now, uh, you're a practical man, Judge. Sure, you can send Claxton to me to prison, but it won't get you a raise in salary and won't get you much of a reward. And as for me, with a contact man who knows when the big expressed money shipments are to be made, it'll, it'll ruin a million dollar business. You say you've got a contact man in the express office? A big one. A superintendent. Which office? I'm a practical man, too, Judge. How do I know you ain't lying? You think I held up that train on the spur of the moment? How do you think I knew the money was aboard? A million dollar business. But not with me in prison. If we don't get it, somebody else will. You know, I like the way you talk, I like the way you handle yourself. All I need is a little freedom. It won't be that simple. A lot of people here in town know you were arrested with some of that holdup money in your possession. All you gotta say is, I proved I found it around the money box. Others did. Now, what guarantee have I got if I turn you loose, you won't pull out? The best in the world. I need you more than you need me. This is a safe place to hold up between operations. Besides, if I did pull out, you'd still be better off by $3,000. Yeah. Yeah. Gentlemen, I guess we owe Mr. Barlow an apology. He's clean as a hound's tooth. Wait a minute. Perhaps you misunderstood me. Mr. Barlow had nothing to do with the train robbery. Found the money. Oh. Oh, well, that was our opinion, too. Yeah, clean as a house, too. <laughs> yeah. Have Courtright release the other two. I'm going out to the u haul farm with Mr. Barlow. Why did I go to? And me? Try and stop you. Oh, by the way, uh, did you two gents give the judge his share of the $600 you took from me? Your Honor, $3,000. And this is only the beginning. All right, so far so good. Now, where do we go from here? 
We, uh, we have to wait for news from the head office. Well, let's hope it won't be too long. We hope stronger than you, since we're the ones who've been cleaned out. Have a good day, gentlemen. I'd rather nab those three than to turn in the Reno boys. Take it easy, Jim. One thing at a time. Was that uh, 3,000 even? You get yours, Mr. Prosecutor. You get it. Just ask him. You know, I was just thinking. He'd be a good one to send to Davis County with a Reno instead of Jason or Courtright. Maybe. One thing, he don't scare, is he? You reckon the Reno's at Stanford? He'll have to. To make it a court order. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Anything else, Miss Laura? Oh, yes, I'd like a side of bacon. But yesterday you... I know. I'd like another side of bacon. Very well. Eight and a half pounds, all right? Fine. And anything else? That's all. Uh, here's that, uh, article you asked for, Miss Laura. Oh, thank you. Goodbye, Mr. Fisher. Goodbye, Miss Laura. Howdy, Laura. Oh, Clint. Uh, Mr. Barlow, I'd like you to meet my brother, Clint. How are you? How do you do? Nice meeting you, Miss Barlow. Interested in painters, Miss Lauren? Yes. Sixteenth century painters. Oh. I don't think you're going to find me in this edition. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we shop tomorrow? A couple more shopping days like this and I can open my own store. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a genuine pleasure, Miss Laura. I agree. Thank you, Mr. Barlow. Good day. yourself killed? Contrary, I was just planning my future. I don't like you, Barlow. Don't like you at all, but I admire guts. Judge Hawkins says you're pretty good at train robbing. Fair, I'd say. Seems to think you're good enough to ride with the Renos. That's a compliment. My partner and I'll consider your invitation. No partners. The judge didn't say nothing about nobody, just you. I see. Uh, when do we go? Now? Now? Uh, where? When you ride with us, Barlow, don't ask no questions. Come on. line we just crossed? Right. Any harm now in telling me where we're going? Up ahead. How much farther? You ask too many questions. What do you mean by that? Look, you're along as an extra hand. You got nothing to say. Didn't the judge make that clear? Yeah. All right, now I'm making it clear, so get it through your head. All right. We'll split up and circle around and go in. Noby? Yeah. You meet us on Church Hill. Pick John and Sim up in front of the surveyor's office. Come on, John. Hey! All right. 
No, Frank, the courthouse is no good the front way. They gotta go around the back. But Frank didn't plan it that way. Frank didn't plan to have the sheriff eating his dinner across the street, either. says we got to use the back door of the courthouse. All right, let's go. Money in here. I know what's in there. I'll fill that up. Get your hands a little higher, neighbor. You, get over there. Move. Your brains don't match your guts.
what you figure we got? Plenty. Nice and clean, if I do say myself. We left those boys far behind. Yeah, but they still got the telegraph on their side. This is where we split up. Every man goes back to the house his own way. Round about, too. Move out! I reckon you didn't hear me right. I said this is where we split up. I don't know this country. So go with one of them. I'm going with you. Sins is how are you the one that's got the money. $21,220. Well, split between 10 of us, that's $2,122 a piece. That don't seem like very much. Could have been more. Why wasn't it then? Ask him. Everything was going fine until he took a shot at one of the clerks. If I'd let him get his hands on that pistol, he'd have blown somebody's head off. Should have put him on the floor in the first place. Should have put them all on the floor the moment we went in. You don't think much of the way I run things, do you? No, not very much. $2,122 a piece for all this work and risk. <laughs> You'd be better off if you went back to plowing. Well, you'll get a chance to see what kind of a job you come up with. Won't be for chicken feed like this. You can bet on it. Count out my share. I want to get to bed. This time, I'll divide with Claxon. But next time, he's got to be in on it. Good night. Old as an icicle. Mighty big for his britches. That is a six gun, real pretty, though. Real pretty. You paint a pretty picture, Mr. Barlow. I'm sorry if I disappoint you, Miss Laura, but as you know, in our business, a little dishonest is necessary now and then. So you're no better than the rest of them. In fact, you're not as good. At least the Renos don't pretend to be something they're not. I'm, I'm flattered by your interest, but if you were attracted by the painter rather than the man, maybe it's better you find out now. I guess it is. I don't expect very much of people, but I believed in you. I wanted to believe in you. I wanted so much to believe in you. I can't wait any longer. I gotta get a message to Peterson. Why don't you wait till morning, Monk? He'll turn up. Maybe so, no, or maybe not. He might have been sidetracked from his business. You know, I was warned about his fondness for women. You better get a horse saddled. As you say. Somebody's coming. That's funny. Going around the back. Good evening, gents. Hi. Hi, Jim. Oh, I want you to get a lot of started on this way to Peterson. I'll saddle up right away. All right. Where have you been, Jim? What happened? Several interesting things, Monk. Several interesting things. Letter from Barlow, Dad. Good. making progress. Wants me to meet him at the sheriff's office in North Vernon as quickly as possible. Oh? Get word to our field man that I'll be there Friday night. You best make it Saturday night. May take a little while to find Hieronymus. He's always on the move, you know. Oh, Saturday then. <laughs> Hieronymus. What a name. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll be doggone. <laughs> you ain't the old medicine man 
sell. Sell anything new? No, the old stuff's getting better. <laughs> I want you to meet my boys. Jim, Monk, come here. This is my nephew, Jim Barlow. Happy to make your acquaintance, Mr. Howdy. Barlow. Monk Claxton. Acquaintance, Mr. Claxton. What are you doing back in this territory? Oh, I got a fine line of enamel ware. Stewing pots and side dishes. All right, you can talk now. We're by ourselves. In my business, friend, caution becomes a habit. Barlow, Mr. Peterson wants to meet you Saturday night. Where? Sheriff Mosley's office in North London. I'll be there. That's probably Barlow. Hello, Peterson. Glad you could make it. Good to see you, Jim. Sheriff Mosley. Sheriff. Howdy, Barlow. Deputy Barlow. Howdy. Howdy. I was beginning to worry about you. I did a little worrying myself. How's Monk? Oh, just fine, just fine. Sit down, sit down. Now, gentlemen, here's the layout. I got the clique all primed for a big haul. All that's necessary is to bait the trap, but we must bait it well. Mm, telegram, Indianapolis. James Barlow, Seymour, Indiana. Based on yield this year, the next corn crop should reach 100,000 bushels. And we'll need your help to farm. Aunt Mary leaves here Friday the 11th on train 58 on her way to Louisville. Try to see her for a moment at Seymour. What does this mean? That's from the contact man at the home office of the express company. Mm. It means train 58 leaving Indianapolis for Louisville this coming Friday will be carrying $100,000. $100,000? So that's it. $100,000. It's the answer to everything. It means we can go to California. Now, gentlemen, I, I, I wouldn't be buying my tickets yet. Remember, Friday's only three days off. That won't give me enough time to get my men together. Claxton and I can't handle this by ourselves. You got the Reno boy. I don't get along with them there. Clodhopper's uh, crew. They've done good so far. Reputation, yes, but they're still Clodhopper's. This is a big job. It has to be handled right. Otherwise, I'd rather pass it up and wait for another one. But when'll that be? I don't know. But if the Reno's followed your orders on this. You know how they feel. Frank wants to run everything. But suppose he lets you run it. Yeah. Yeah. You understand? They're my instructions. I won't have any arguments from anyone. Well, for that kind of money, we can afford to let you run things. There can't be any hit or miss about this. We'll meet at the U-Haul farm at 5 in the morning. I'll be waiting. I'll be waiting. Blow the top of his head off. After we get the money. Hello, Clint. Barlow, I gotta talk to you. What about? Laura. I want you to get her away from here before it's too late. I've tried to get her away myself. Even offered to leave the county with her, but she's loyal to my brothers. I don't know that I can do anything about it. You can break her loose. That's what you can do about it. My brothers are no good. They're destroying themselves, they're destroying Laura, and maybe you too if you don't get away. But I, uh... She's worth saving, Mr. Barlow. Believe me, she's worth saving. Take her away. She'll go with you. She's in love with you. Seems to me this is something she should say for herself, Clint. What time is it? I don't know. 
but it's getting mighty late. Here he comes. Let's get ready, boy. on the other end of the train. Be quiet. Come with me. You're surrounded. That no good follows an eight.
over here! All right, come out of there! Hands up! Come on! Sam, look, they, they got Frank. All right, they got him. Shut up. No. We ain't got a chance here. I'm gonna give up. The what? Don't shoot. I give up. Come back here, you rat. Take him into town, boys. One. Why didn't you let me shoot the yellow belly? We are saving him and you. All right, take them off. Come on. Mosley, did they get the man with the horses? We got the lot. Poor Claxton. He didn't know how right he was when he called this a calculated risk. Almost a good man, Peterson. And they may get loose. They may, indeed. Nobody knows what the Renos can do. We simply cannot take any more chances with them, not only for our own sakes, but for the sake of the whole state. All around us, other counties are decent and God-fearing, while we have been notorious. This is not my idea. This is the idea of the majority of you. None of us is excited. None of us is hot-headed. This is something that has to be done, and done with as little compunction as you would kill a rattlesnake. Anybody got anything to say? As long as the Renos are left alive, there's always the threat that we'll be terrorized again. I say the time has come for us to make sure we can live the rest of our lives in peace and quiet. And to take some of the shame off Jackson County. Anything else? We've talked enough. Let's get the job done. It's now 11 o'clock. We'll leave right away. That should put us there by 3 while it's still dark. Come armed and with masks.
Come on. Laura. It had to happen, whether they were your brothers or mine. <laughs> I'm sorry I couldn't tell you the real truth about myself. Oh, oh, oh Jim! <laughs> Who's in there? It's all right, Noah. You, Jim? Yeah. Well, sounded like you're trying to get yourself some night owls. What's going on here? Oh! Who is it? Clint, Mr. You all, where's Marlow? He's here. There? Oh, Mr. Barlow. Laura. They're after Frank and the others. Oh. Fisher and the mob. They're headed for North Vernon. Look after Laura. Oh, Clint, what happened? Fisher, Dedrick, and Foley are the leaders. They've stirred up the whole town. Sheriff, stand up. Don't reach for your gun. What do you want? We want the Reno brothers. You've been got the Give us the keys. You men got no right Give to... us the keys. Well, you got wearing masks anyway. Hurry up. We haven't got all night. Which way? There. All right. Take them out. Your hands off of me. You keep out of this, Bubble. You're breaking the law. I'm going in. We're the law now. You're a mob. We're the citizens and we're going through with this. <laughs> Don't let I say that. 
Pappy, you're making me sick. Frank! Get away from those ropes! Too late, Barlow. You want law and order. Is this the way to get it with a mob? The Renos are gonna be tried. Tried, legal, and proper. They're gonna be hanged now. Yep, drop that gun, Barlow. Get on with it. I know you, Fisher, and you, Dedrick. If you hang these men... All right, Fisher. Who are the others? Dedrick, who are they? I don't like lynches much better than I like outlaws. Put them in the Reno cells. It was worth it. After a few years behind the bars, maybe you'll change your tune. Mighty good shooting, Barlow. Sorry, fella. Didn't do much good after all. You shouldn't have come here. I had to. I'm sorry, Laura. I tried. I know. 